What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about soy. Does it feminize you? Does it give you man boobs? Does it lower testosterone? Soy contains isoflavones which are referred to as phytoestrogens because they have the capacity to bind to the estrogen receptor. And the thought process was even if it didn't give you gynecomastia, it was going to drop your testosterone and so why would you do that? So I actually avoided soy for probably a decade. And then around 2010, some studies came out that showed that it didn't appear to really do that. We didn't really have a ton of them. And so I still kind of stayed away from it. I would say even until about five years ago. And then at that point, I kind of got comfortable enough where I'm like, this stuff doesn't seem to make a difference. It is still a common theme that's out there. And even people referring to like effeminate men as soy boys as a derogatory term. There was recently a new meta-analysis published looking at uh, studies that gave soy protein either as like intact soy or soy protein concentrate or soy protein isolate and then examined total testosterone, free testosterone, estrone, estradiol, and sex hormone binding globulin. So a few points to make. A high intake of soy in terms of isoflavones is around 75 milligrams of isoflavones. And that corresponds to about three servings of like soy per day, like, a, like three half cups of tofu or soybeans or, or whatever you want. When people who are anti-soy kind of want to scare you, what they'll say is things like, well, an intake of soy corresponding to that amount will raise the isoflavones in your blood even higher than your normal estrogen. And it can bind to the estrogen receptor. So oh, these are different molecules than estrogen. Even though they have some similarities, they're different molecules. The affinity is quite different. Even if you've got a greater amount in your blood, they're still not binding to that receptor necessarily with the same affinity. And that's a very important distinction. At the end of the day, what matters is not animal studies, not in vitro studies, but what do we see when we give this to humans? And so this study was cool because they measured the stuff that we're actually interested in, testosterone, free testosterone, estrone, estradiol, and sex hormone binding globulin. For those who aren't familiar, sex hormone binding globulin binds with testosterone, making it unavailable to bind with the androgen receptor. And so typically what you see is if free testosterone goes up, maybe because sex hormone binding globulin goes down or total testosterone goes up, all those three things kind of play in concert together. Now this study examined about 1,700 total men. Now they didn't measure every single metric for every single person because some of those studies measured only a couple, some of them measured several, some of them measured all of them. So amongst the study, I'm just going to read off here, testosterone and free testosterone levels were measured in 1,753 and 752 men respectively. Estrone and estradiol were measured in 239 and 1,000 men respectively. And sex hormone binding globulin was measured in 967 men. And the age ranges were from 18 to 81. So a pretty diverse sample size. And they were also anywhere from like a couple months to over six months. And they also parsed out studies where they gave high amounts of isoflavones versus lower amounts of isoflavones. They really did a good job examining several different aspects of soy intake. What did they find? They found that soy consumption did not affect testosterone levels, estrogen levels, estrone levels, or any marker that they assessed. And this held true even when they did a sensitivity analysis. Now, sensitivity analysis is where they take a study that contributes the most strongly to the overall outcome of the meta-analysis and they remove it. So sometimes if a single study is driving a result, if you do a sensitivity analysis and remove it, now you will no longer have that result or you might have a different result. And even in that case, there was no difference in the outcomes and there was actually relatively low heterogeneity. Now heterogeneity basically kind of refers to how much disagreement is there amongst the studies. That's not the exact definition, but for our purposes, it's pretty much it. If you have different studies with different outcomes, you're going to have high amounts of heterogeneity. And this tends to happen in quite a few meta-analyses, uh, but in this one, it was relatively low. So that again, kind of gives us confidence that the results we're seeing here appear to be genuine. And the result held true 
for short-term or long-term duration, and held true for high or low intake of isoflavones. It's unlikely that there's gonna be new studies that come out that contradict this. The other thing to keep in mind is when it comes to soy, especially people who are consuming it as soy protein concentrate and soy protein isolate, a lot of the isoflavones are lost during that processing. So if you're somebody who's worried about soy in like a protein bar, or you're worried about it in a protein powder, you really don't need to be because even with high doses of soy, we don't seem to see effects on testosterone. You're getting much lower amounts of isoflavones than these anyway. So that being said, I would still not consider soy as good as something like whey protein just because of the difference in leucine content. But for people who are vegans and don't want to have an animal source of protein, soy is actually one of the best, if not the best sources of protein out there. I think potato protein isolate is probably better just because it has a higher leucine content, but it's much, much more difficult to find. And soy is available pretty much anywhere. So I know there's going to be some woke alpha males who are commenting on this and saying that they don't care what the data says. They know that soy will give you man boobs and whatnot. Remember that data is more important than your feelings. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, tap that like button, subscribe to the channel, I'll catch you next week.